Hair disorders are common and they can have a significant impact on one's psychological well-being. In this presentation, we'll cover hair structure, hair cycle, disorders of hair loss, including scarring and non-scarring alopecias, and briefly touch on excess hair. Hair structure. Diagram A shows pictures of a terminal hair. It can be broadly divided into two parts, hair shaft and hair root. Hair shaft lies above the epidermis and hair root underneath it. It is important to be aware of a few important structures which make up the hair root. This includes the bulge region. The bulge region is a thickened area of follicle wall and this is where the stem cells reside. Attached to the bulb region is the erector pili muscle. When erector pili muscle contracts, it pulls the hair up, giving goosebumps. Another important structure is the sebaceous gland. Sebaceous glands produce sebum, which protects the hair shaft and acts as a natural conditioner. The lowest most portion of the hair root is the bulb region. It encompasses the dermal papilla and the hair matrix. It also contains melanocytes which give hair its color. Dermal papilla instigates and directs hair growth and hair matrix is the actively growing portion of the hair follicle and produces the hair shaft. Diagram B shows a cross section through the bulb region and you can appreciate the consecutive layers. The hair shaft lies in the inner aspect of it and is formed by the medulla, cortex and the hair cuticle. This is surrounded by the inner root sheath, outer root sheath and connective tissue sheath. The inner root sheath coats and supports the hair shaft. The outer root sheath provides slippage plane, nutrition, regulatory molecules and stem cells. The hair cycle is an autonomous phenomenon, though it can be modulated by numerous systemic or extrafollicular factors. The hair cycle has three phases, anatin, catatin, and telogen. Anatin is the growing phase, and approximately 90% of scalp hair are in anatin phase. It lasts approximately three to four years. Catatin phase is characterized by involution of the lower two-third of the hair follicle by massive keratinocyte apoptosis. It lasts two to three weeks, and at any given time, less than 1% of hair are in catatin phase. Telogen phase is the resting phase, which approximately lasts three months. And you can see in this diagram that the root of the hair follicle is detached to from the hair follicle and this will eventually be shedded. After the telogen phase, the hair undergoes another anagen phase to produce new hair that grows out of the same follicle, as you can see in this picture here. Disorders of hair leading to hair loss can be divided into two types, non-scarring and scarring. Examples of non-scarring alopecias or hair loss include alopecia areata, telogen effluvium, pattern hair loss, also known as androgenic alopecia, and trichotillomania. Disorders of scarring include follicular cystic helmets, frontal fibrosing alopecia, black and planar pilaris, and discoid lupus. Pattern hair loss, also known as androgenic alopecia, presents as hair shedding, thinning, and hair loss in a pattern distribution. In men, it can present as frontal parietal and frontal recession with vertex thinning. And in women, commonly there is widening of the hair parting, but can also present in male pattern, which is bitemporal recession and vertex involvement. The underlying process is the miniaturization of the hair follicle. As you can see in the picture, that a normal hair follicle has multiple hair arising from it. There is gradual reduction in hair length, diameter, and number over time. In men, the role of androgens have been established, such as dihydrotestosterone. However, this is not the case in female. Genetics play a role in both genders. 
terms of management of pattern hair loss, it is very important to explore and manage any psychological distress associated with it. In terms of medical management, minoxidil can be used, which comes in topical and oral form. Minoxidil works by increasing the blood flow to the hair follicle, hence encouraging hair growth. If it does work, it needs to be continued for a long period of time to sustain the response. Other treatments include finasteride, which inhibits 5-alpha reductase and the enzyme which regulates dihydrotestosterone, and spironolactone, which is entryandrogenic. Collagen effluvium results from acute disruption of the hair cycle due to some sort of shock with the system. There are several different causes, for example, postpartum hair loss, undergoing surgical operation, or psychological stress. It is characterized by excessive shedding of the resting or telogen hair. Under normal circumstances, approximately 15% of scalp hair are in telogen phase, and this phase tends to last approximately 3 to 4 months. What happens in telogen effluvium is this proportion is changed with more hair moved into telogen phase. It is important to differentiate this with anagen effluvium, where there is disruption of the anagen phase of the hair cycle, which commonly results from chemotherapy. Telogen effluvium is a form of non-scarring alopecia and tends to resolve by six months. In terms of management of telogen effluvium, conservative measures such as gentle handling of the hair are important and also important to treat any underlying scalp disorders, whether it be hormonal or nutritional abnormality. Again, like with any hair disorder, do not forget to explore and act on any psychological impact it may be having on a patient. Alopecia areata is an autoimmune condition which affects the hair follicles resulting in non-scarring alopecia. Any hair-bearing skin can be involved but it most commonly affects the scalp or beard area and less frequently the eyebrows and eyelashes. There are different types of alopecia areata. In patchy type, there are one or more point shaped, usually round or oval patches of hair loss. In alopecia areata totalis, there is hair loss across the entire scalp. In universalis, there is hair loss across the entire body, including eyebrows and eyelashes. In diffuse alopecia areata, there is sudden and unexpected thinning of the hair all over the scalp. And in ophysis alopecia, the hair loss occurs in a band along the sides and back of the head. Factors associated with poor prognosis include history of HIV, long duration of disease, extensive disease, onset before puberty, involvement of nails, associated with other autoimmune diseases, and a positive family history. In terms of clinical examination, you may see exclamation mark hairs or blood dots, which are suggestive of active disease, or yellow dots, which are seen in chronic disease and suggest preservation of follicular ostea. We use salt score to grade the severity of alopecia, which stands of severity of alopecia too. This is where the scalp is divided into four different sections, as you can see in the picture, and each section is given a percentage as per the hair loss. So a high salt score corresponds to worse severity. So for example, salt score of 100 means complete hair loss. On the other hand, salt score of zero means no hair loss. In terms of management of alopecia areata, different treatments can be tried. In patchy disease, spontaneous regrowth can occur. So you might want to monitor such patients or treat with potent or very potent topical steroids. You can also try intralesional triamcelinone. Other treatments to treat alopecia areata includes oral steroid, diphenyl cyclofloxacin, 
immunosuppressants such as aflosporin, methotrexate, and azathioprine, and JAK inhibitors. The most recently licensed treatment by the National Institute for Health and, Clinic, uh, and Care Excellent, or NICE, is pertlicitinib, which is JAK3 and TEC kinase inhibitor licensed to treat severe alopecia areata in patients 12 years old. Moving on to scarring disorders. Folliculitis de Calvin is a painful chronic inflammatory disease leading to scarring hair loss. It tends to occur in fourth and fifth decade of life with male predominance. Clinically, it presents as tufting of hair, which resembles doll's hair, and perifollicular pustules. And if you were to take a biopsy, you'll see neutrophilic inflammation. Additionally, Staph aureus has also been implicated in its pathogenesis. Folliculitis de Calvin's is a tricky condition to treat, and you have to try different treatments as they stop responding. Treatment options include rifampicin and clindamycin, tetracycline antibiotics, ciprofloxacin, comptrimoxazole, oral retinoids, dapsone, PDT, or laser hair removal. Frontal fibrosing alopecia is another scarring alopecia, which affects the frontal scalp hair margin, leading to recession of hairline. Other clinical features include depressed forehead veins and madurosis. Treatment options include intralesional corticosteroids, hydroxychloroquine, or finasteride. Lichen planar pilaris can result in patchy or diffuse scarring alopecia. Characteristically, it presents as perifollicular scale noted on the root of hair. It is important to thoroughly examine patients to look for signs of lichen planus affecting other areas of the body. In terms of management, localized disease can be managed with intralesion steroids and extensive cases, tetracyclines or hydroxychloroquine can be tried. Central centrifugal secretion alopecia is a scarring disorder that is most commonly seen in afro-textured hair. It is the most common form of scarring hair loss seen in black women. It starts at the vertex and expands outwards. The exact cause is unknown, but it is likely multifactorial. Certain hair care practices have been implicated, such as use of hot comb, relaxers, tight extensions and weaves. And a genetic component has also been suggested, which involves an enzyme called papillodal arginine diaminase type 3. This enzyme is involved in modifying proteins that are essential to the formation of the hair shaft. Management options include topical or intralesional steroids, steroid sparing agents such as calcineurin inhibitors, antibiotics such as tetracyclines, hydroxychloroquine or cyclosporine. Excess of hair. There are two different terms used to describe hair excess, which include hair cytosine and hypertrichosis. Hair cytosine occurs in women with excessive growth of terminal hairs in androgen-dependent sites, whereas hypertrichosis results in excessive hair growth, which doesn't necessarily occur in androgen-dependent sites. Causes of hypertrichosis can be divided into congenital or applied. Congenital causes such as congenital hypertrichosis lunguinosa and applied causes resulting from drugs such as minoxidil, phenytoin, cyclosporin, streptomycin, or metabolic causes such as prophylaxis. Hirsutism. Hirsutism means excessive growth of terminal hair in male distribution. These sites include inner thighs, lower abdomen, breasts, chin, lateral cheeks, and upper cutaneous lip. Hirsutism results from excess androgen and increased androgen sensitivity. The most common cause is polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS. Other causes include Cushing's disease, acromegaly, prolactin screening adenomas, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, and anabolic steroids. 
Useful investigations include androgen levels, luteinizing hormone or NH, follicle stimulating hormone or FSH, early morning total and free testosterone, and 17 hydroxy progesterone levels. In terms of management of hair ascetism, physical methods of hair removal can be used, such as depilatory creams, shaving, waxing, electrical hair removal, or laser hair removal. Medical management, such as aflorotine, oral contraceptive pill, or antiandrogens.